saying it's Prophet as Don O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner here. I'm live today on Facebook. If you're not a friend on here, we have a few more spots left. You can send a friend request, or if it's too, we've got too many friends, you can also link to our fan page here on Facebook. Now, if you're not a, a subscriber on our YouTube page, I do place up the links. You can go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page so that you'll know when I come on live on there. Um, this, these are the platforms right now that God has placed us on, and I can't seem to link them together. So, and I do more on Facebook, and then I post them up on YouTube as well because it seems like we're getting more people that listen on here on Facebook. Now, today I'm a little tired. I kept waking up last night, like every hour it seems like I kept waking up. And um, tomorrow I won't be here. I've got, Lord's will, I've got some errands to do, and I never know when I'm going to come on again. Now, if you want to give a gift, I'm getting ready to go to the mailbox. You know, if you feel like sending a gift, or you want to send a prayer request or anything, you can send it to Dawn's Heartfelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida, 32716. And I placed the link up there so that you'll know the address. You can also give a gift right now. It'll come directly to our PayPal at www.dawnsheartfeltcorner.org. You can partner with us. You know, as of right now, we don't have anybody supporting us, and we need people to help us. And because God is getting ready to take our ministry off. I truly believe that. So if God has placed in your heart to help support our ministry, I'm going to ask you to please help us. You know, I'm still waiting for Social Security. I'm praying to God that they don't um, take our the money away, you know, because they're changing all this. But yet we help out immigrants, people that are not even citizens here in the United States. And that upsets me, you know. We help out um, even those that live um LGBT homosexuals, we, we give them surgeries for transgenders and things. We're not going to get into that right now. But I've got Senator Marco Rubio's office is working on that for me. And I'm praying that God will give me a favor. Now, if you want to send us a gift, you can specify this gift is for Daniel and Dawn Ryan. We appreciate your gifts because we don't get no gifts. This is the, the what we do right here is what we're doing. We're waiting on the Lord to open doors. And Jesus gets all the glory. Now, if you are a large gift you want to give to our ministry, you can do that. We are a 501c3 tax deductible. You can write it off on your taxes. And I will send you out a receipt. Okay? I want you to know that we are tax deductible. So at the end of the year, you can write off. Now, if you want to send a letter, you can send it to heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. If you want to send a prayer request, you know, or you want to send a word of encouragement, I love to read your letters. You know, it, it really encourages my heart to keep coming on here and keep speaking. You know, if you want to put a direct line on Facebook, or on YouTube. Now, I, I'm not going to write you back, probably, so I'm going to let you know. And I don't mean that personally, so please don't take it personally. I'm the only one doing everything. It's me right now. So if I don't write you back, if I speak to you as a whole, that's because it's easier for me to do that. We pray on here. I believe God wants us to pray. So we're going to pray for you. I always do at the end of the program. And we appreciate you praying for our ministry because it helps us to keep going and persevering. And we're all going to have to keep going, the saints, because these are trying times that we're living in. Things are drastically changing. Well, in a few minutes, I'll give you some news. We're going to worship some more. Let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here to say what you're wanting me to say. I yield myself to you and allow you to speak through me slowly and clearly, Lord. We just welcome you here. Precious Holy Spirit, you are welcome to have your way. I ask you to wash us. Cleanse us in your blood, Father. Thank you for your mercy, your grace that's new each day, Lord. Thank you for the strength that you help us, Lord. You help us get out of that bed and put a foot forward to keep going, Lord. Lord, I pray for those that are working on the world today, Lord. I know it's not easy. They have to get up and they have to go to work, Lord. Give them the grace and strength and to be a witness that they need to be in the workplace wherever they're at, Lord, today. Lord, we thank you, Lord. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. And we offer you up our praise, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship Jesus. 
My life is in you, Lord. So let's worship him. Trying to get these to go. It's an awesome God. Praise Him.
Yes, Lord, you're awesome. We praise you this morning. God is an awesome God. Oh, God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven God is an awesome God. Oh, God. Yes, our God is awesome. Our God is awesome. God is awesome. sing this song. This is one of my favorites. I love it. You raise me up. There are those. God's getting ready to raise up. So get ready. It's one of my favorite songs.
raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger. Each restless heart beats so
This is His song. Oh, the glory of Your presence. We, Your temple, give You reverence. Come and rise to Your rest and be blessed by our praise. Let's be a great choir of worshipers tonight as we present this offering to our living King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the glory of your presence. We
justice. Your name will be exalted among the heavens.
so pure and so kind. You shine like the bright morning star. for our redemption and salvation. The one who shed his precious blood, Jesus, who is seated at God's right hand, King of kings, Lord of lords, wonderful Jesus. Praise the Lord. Don't you love to just be in God's presence? That was one of our little songs from our church. But that was at Pastor Benny's um, choir, um, his crusades. I love to worship God. That's one thing I, we, Daniel and I did learn in our younger years. We sat under the church. I mean, I agree with everything Pastor Benny preaches, but we learned to worship the, the Lord when we sat in that church. I love intimate worship. You know, I can't really do... A worship service because we have to play songs right now because this is the platform that God has me on. But praise God. What a mighty God we serve. And you know, I can't sing today, it seems like, because, you know, my asthma, you know, I take medication. Pray for me, saints. I really do believe God's going to heal me. You know, I it acts up at night, so I um, take inhalers, but I also have a machine, and if I take it too much, with the, I guess it's like a solution, if I take it too much, I get forced, and then I can't talk. And we don't want that, because the enemy will try to take my voice away. All right, so um, let's share some encouraging words, and then I'm going to share with you what God said to me yesterday. Now, he did speak a word to me, but, you know, like I've told you, God's timing is not our timing, you know. And it's an encouraging word for those that have been waiting and, and that. So let's... um. Let me share a few encouraging words with you this morning. This one is from God's for Today. 
I mean, grace for today. <laughs> Sorry. Grace for today. Today, what is it? The time is flying, saying we're almost halfway through this month. All right. Today is October 11th. Offering praise. He has sent me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. They will be called oaths of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Praise and thanksgiving have the power to change lives. When the storm clouds of life obscure the sunshine of God's love, when doubt threatens to destroy our faith in the goodness of God, when life seems to be falling apart, then more than ever it's necessary to praise and thanksgiving from the depths of our hearts. See, we, we need to offer God thanksgiving no matter what we're going through. You might ask, how can you thank and praise God if it seems that there's nothing to thank Him for? Thank God that He is greater than any problem you are facing. That's right. God is greater and you are alive. You're well. He woke you up this morning. You know, we serve an awesome God. Thank God that He's greater than any problem you're facing. As you focus on His greatness, your life will rise above all destructive influences. Here's a little prayer. O oh Lord, teach me to rejoice in spite of the things that happen. Help me to remember that all things work together for my good because I love you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we get into this, I forgot. Let's get to some news. I want to make sure I give you the news of what's going on. I don't share a lot of news with you. On the front of our YouTube page, I put between um, 5 and 10 videos. But I do place them on here on Facebook. Now, I don't sit there and view all the news. I don't have time to do that. I'm not a newscaster. You know, I'm called to preach the gospel and, and share prophetic words and what the Holy Spirit is saying tomorrow. But you're welcome to go on there subscribe to our YouTube so that you can go on the front of our page and listen to some of the news. I know there are those that like to, to look up and know what's going on. We all need to know. Now, I'm not saying we need to be fearful or worried, but yes, we do need to know that the times we're living. You know, a lot of people don't even know what's going on. I've noticed that. I've talked to people and they don't even know what's going on. All right, I want to talk to you again about this. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, the ones that and I'm having trouble with these websites here. Um, I want to talk to you about that asteroid that's supposed to be coming. Um, let me see if I can get it up. It's supposed to be coming. Let me see. I'll go to something else first if I can get to something else. All right. Let's go to this one first. China besieges the U.S. Please cool it with the North Korea threats. Okay. China is urging the U.S. and North Korea to exercise restraint as threats continue. Chinese State media warned of the risk of misjudgment, urging dialogue. Okay, China has one message for the United States, and it's willing to repeat it constantly in its media outlets. Calm down with the threats of violence against North Korea. Well, you know what? North Korea started all this. You know, <laughs> you know, we can't trust China. I'm going to tell you right now, and I've said this before: you can't trust China. You can't trust Russia. You know, the only one we can trust is God. We need to turn to God. Okay. Um, down here it says, late on Tuesday, the U.S. military flew two Air Force B-1B Lancer bombers over the Korean Peninsula and show up for us amid high tensions over North Korea nuclear and missile programs. Can we see a war break out any time now? The move came after President Donald Trump's thinly veiled threat on Saturday of a possible armed confrontation with North Korea. China got right back to work after week-long public holding, urging the two parties to cool it in an editorial published Tuesday in State Mouthpiece People's Daily. War on the Korean Peninsula would be catastrophic, and dialogue remains the best option, the Communist Party-owned newspaper said. Well, you know what? Dialogue's not going to work because, you know, Kim Jong-un keeps doing those uh, missile tests and, you know, and then, but President Trump also needs to watch what he says, you know, when he's on Twitter. I know God, we know that God's in control and this, you know, God knows this is going to happen. All we can do is pray, saints. That's all we can do. All right, I'm going to mention here about those fires, okay? Let me see if I can get on it here. I'm having trouble here. Give me a minute. This is from the Washington Post. If I can get it. It's giving a little trouble here. Let's see if I can get to this one. All right, the, well, the asteroid warning, that's from the Express. Let's see. Let's see if it's going to go. Okay, well, here we got, we got back to the other one. 
the um the fires. Pure devastation. At least 17 dead as firefighters struggle to contain California fires. We need to pray about that. You know what? If you remember, I've given words about um, you know, I gotta share this with you. Let me first share this article. All right, it says. A series of deadly Northern California wildfires regained momentum Wednesday as winds whipped back up, pushing blazes through parched hills and vineyards and prompting additional evacuations from an arc of flames that has killed at least 17 people, destroyed more than 2,000 buildings, and battered the region's renowned wine growing industry. Local officials order a fresh round of mandatory evacuations and flame battered. Sonoma County, where at least 11 people have died and about 180 remain missing. One of the massive fires that have been ravaging the region since Sunday advanced overnight toward populated areas, prompting the additional evacuations. Sonoma County Deputy Sheriff Jones said, The two base wine co country fires known as Tubbs and Atlas grew overnight as conditions worsened worsened and had torched a combined 54,000 acres by Wednesday morning. Ooh. The fast-moving flames have swept through densely populated neighborhoods in California's wine country over the past few days, causing residents to flee from home to the middle of the, in the middle of the night, they're saying, as smoke filled the rooms. One couple had to jump into the pool as flames rushed across their land, taking occasional gasps for air as flames lapped on, at their backs. High winds that whipped up 17 large fires had faded earlier Tuesday and humidity increased assisting an operation that has drawn resources from throughout the state and neighboring Nevada. You know, Nevada's been having a lot of earthquakes too, I've noticed. But officials warned that the sharp northern wind known as Diablo would return along only a brief window for firefighters to carve clearings in place to stop the fires from spreading to vulnerable populated areas. That wind returned Tuesday night along with lower humidity levels. The National Weather Service expects these red flag conditions, including wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour, to remain until Thursday in the North Bay area, which includes Sonoma and Napa counties. So that is what's going on with that. Let me, um, we need to keep them in prayer. I want to tell you, um, what God told me earlier. Remember, I did, um, a few prophetic words I'm going to share with you. Um, I gave a word on um, 7:21:17. The state of California is going to go up in flames. Now I don't know if it's a whole state or if it's part of the state. I don't know. Okay, that's what I heard, and I'm going to read this to you again to to show you what God said to me. Okay. Um, I mean, I wasn't sitting at the computer playing on doing this, okay? Um, I'm just sharing this with you. This happened on July 21st. I was walking on the treadmill in the gym at 11.30 a.m. in the morning when I heard the Holy Spirit say, California is about to go up in flames now. And we're seeing that. That's happening even now. I said to God, I'm not going to leave the gym and go tell the people. They'll think I'm crazy, I said. He says to me, if you don't tell them, who will? I kept walking on the treadmill because I was talking to the Lord. I heard God say with a stern voice, do what I tell you to do. I got off the treadmill and was having a conversation with God on my way home. I was walking home. I said, why God? Because I don't even know if you're speaking to me. You know, and sometimes you know and I know. We're like, God, are you even talking to me? You know, and I don't want people to think I'm crazy and say, oh, you're a false prophet. You know, because God knows my heart. I really want to do what he wants me to do. Okay, so I said, God, why? I, he was telling me, do what I tell you to do. I, so I was walking home talking to him, and I said, why, God? Because I don't even know if you're speaking to me. He says to me, I will hold you accountable. I said, me, Lord. And then heard this scripture dropped in my spirit, James 3, 1. And I'm re it says, be not many of you teachers, my brethren, knowing that we shall receive heavier judgment. Okay, the more you know, I said, the more you're going to be held accountable to God. You cannot lie to the Lord either. And remember, I've given this before. A prophet is a servant it's called to warn the people of what is coming. Ezekiel 3, 16 through 19. And um, I'll just read a little bit to you. Verse 16, Now came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I made you a watchman 
for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning for me. When I say the wicked, you should surely die, and you give them no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his declaration, but his blood I require at your hands. See, if I don't say anything, whether or not it happens or not, God knows my heart. He's going to hold me accountable. So I have to share this word. You know, I'm not here to judge you or say, but I mean, I've got to do God's will. So it says down here, let me go on to read this. He'll require it at my hand, at your hand, it says. But his blood, I'll require at your hand. Verse 19, yet if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. See, so if I do or you or your prophetic servant, or even if you're not, you know, if you're, God's calling you to share the gospel, we need to share it. That's what we're to do. And if not, he's going to hold us accountable. Okay, verse 20 says, Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin, his righteousness, which he has he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood of acquiring. See, if we don't do it, God is going to hold us accountable. God showed me the California wildfires were spreading, and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, that the state of emergency they're having right now, because back then they had a state of emergency, compared to what they're going to have, a major state of emergency. And they, I think they've even had another one just recently. I also remember seeing fire trucks, and that was it. I asked the Lord, where are the people to go? Okay, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, they need to seek Him, and He will show them. And remember, we've talked about this before. We can't just do whatever we want to do, because disasters and things are going to happen everywhere. We need to go to God and we need to see God, where are we go? What do we do? We want to be at the right place at the right appointed time. All right. And I said, that is why I've stressed. It's very important, saints, that we pray and seek God in these last days where we are to be just, not just go here and there without Him telling us to, to because we can wind up in harm's way. There'll be major disasters everywhere. You and I need to be praying and seeking the Lord. The Lord will keep you and I safe, and He will. God will keep us safe, and we're walking in the Lord's way. And remember, I've talked about many uh, prophecies about California, all right? Uh, I remember I've woken up at 3 a.m. Move away from the West Coastline. I don't believe it's just going to be California. It's going to be all that whole area over on the West Coastline, because I heard the Lord say, move away from the West Coastline, all right? That's what I heard. Now, you know, I even said to God, if I tell them, they're going to think I'm crazy. And he said, are you more worried about doing pleasing man or doing my will? I said, okay, God, I'm going to do your will. You know, so I know I'm not crazy because now I'm starting to see some of this is coming together. You know, God is still, he moves slow. Okay, he doesn't move on your timetable or my timetable. God's ways are not our ways. All right. So let me get back to this now. I think I lost it now. <laughs> I think I clicked out of it. Anyways, um, remember I told you there is an asteroid that's going to be flying close to Earth. That's coming October 12th. Is that tomorrow? That's tomorrow. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get hit, okay? So don't go saying prophecies don't arise saying we're going to get hit. But remember what happened with Russia, okay? Now, I'm not saying I don't know what's going to happen. God talks about things in last say meteorites, asteroids, we're, we're hearing all that. We're seeing all these fireballs and things that are happening. We're hearing about earthquakes. Remember he said in the last days you're going to hear wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, essence. And we're hearing about those diseases. There's some new diseases coming out as well. I've given you news about that. He said, but the end is not yet. Okay. This is only the beginning of sorrows. And I've talked about this before. We're not going on yet. So, you know, even though we're, I might play a song at the end, Midnight Cry, but we're not going home yet. I wish, but, but we're not, saints. I know God has prepared Daniel and I and some of you for such a time as this. This is what God's called us to. I didn't ask for this. This is what he called us to. He's got a calling for each of us. If we will seek the Lord, ask him what his purpose is for us. You want to be doing God's will, not your own will. All right, let's get back to the these encouraging words here. Now, I'm going to read you Marsha Burns' word from yesterday. She says, Your life is not about issues that you agree with or disagree, but I tell you that life on earth is shorter than you have imagined. 
use the opportunities that you have to secure everlasting life with me, says the Lord. Set your sights on things that matter eternally instead of focusing on things that are temporary. And that's so true. Stop worrying about what's happening right here now. Think about your eternity. All right. Are you born again? We're going to pray a little later. If you don't know Christ, you know, you need to make sure you're ready to stand before the Lord. You want to be blameless and holy. Corinthians 4, 17 through 18 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, you know, our moment is not the same as God's moment, okay? He takes his time, but it is for a moment. If you think about it, you know, every time I think about the people that have died, that they're, they're, they're in hell, you know, burning. That's forever. We can't think in those terms, you know? So this life that we're living is for a moment. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are tempered, but the things which are not seen are eternal. See, so you and I don't know what heaven's going to be like. We're, we haven't died and gone there. We don't know. It's hidden. So that's for eternal. Right here is temporary. All right. This life we live, we're all going to get old and we're going to die. So this is temporary. Let me read you Prophet, word, Prophet Russ's word for today. It was a good word. He said, The Father says, Sam, your life and your strength. Amen. God is our life. He is what keeps us going. By my hand, I'm increasing your vitality and strength in this time frame. The new wine of my spirit is being poured out in a vintage that you have not tasted of at times past. Be open to what I'm doing. Incline your ear to what I'm saying. Yield to my hand and become that new wineskin that is able to embrace new things and new understandings of my kingdom and that have not been clear to you before. There are things you've waited so long for that you've been more comfortable with the waiting than you're ready for the receiving. <laughs> I'm that true. Uh, I have to laugh. I'm sorry. You know, we've been waiting so long. Daniel and I have been sitting here waiting for over 25 years. And we're waiting. God, God, when? God, when? You know, we're, we're, I'm still not patient. I'm still not there yet. You know, we'll go to the grocery store. And it's so funny because every time we're on the line, it either breaks down or something happens. And I tell them, I said, that's because God's making us wait. That's why we have to wait. <laughs> but it happens always with us. And we, we'll watch another lane. They're moving on up. Or, or if you move lanes, you go to this lane because you think it's moving faster. Then that lane will break down. <laughs> all right, let's get back to this. Um, I'm changing all of that. I'm moving you from expectation to manifestation, from hope and longing to substance and reality. This is Amos 9.13 place where the plowman overtakes the reaper because you have, fur fur you, you have furrowed in my field with that faithfulness that changes the atmosphere and brings forth the manifestation of highest heart's desire and greatest dream fulfilled. He goes on to say, the work that I'm doing in you is that which launches you into the now experience of promises and provision. The enemy has wrestled and resisted and sought to keep you bound in leanness and deprivation. But no more. As the enemy has sought to dispose of your blessing and destroy your ability to contain that blessing, now I'm acting in your defense to throw back his strategies and cause you to receive my fullness in a dramatic way. I am shoring up those things in your life that need to be shored up and strengthening those things that have weakened and strained to the breaking point. Others have seen the tension in life and tried to help, but the Father says, I'm the hero. I'm coming through for you and none other. Purpose to remain willing and pliable to my spirit, for I've surely heard your cry. Let your hand be first to the task that I've called you to, and my hand will be the first to the blessing that I'm bringing forth into your life. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. All right, let me read you a word now. Um, it's um, our daily de bread devotional. You know, our daily bread. You know, I like to read these words to you because it, it's so important that you and I stay encouraged, saints. You know, make sure you're reading the Word of God, reading even devotionals that God has placed in your life. You know, listening to worship, praise music. You want to keep yourself constantly encouraging Lord because everything in this world will bring your spirit down and the enemy will whisper in your ear thoughts that will discourage you and depress you. You've got to keep yourself encouraged. You have to. 
And if God has placed a promise, remember I told you, Habakkuk 2, 2, 3, go with the vision, Terry. Wait for it. You've got to hold on to that vision. Because I, I'll tell you right now, the enemy will try to steal it from you. So I read that pretty much every day if, because I'm, I'm believing God said what he said. He's got a time, and I know he's going to do it in this perfect time. Now, I don't know how old I'm going to be. Now, I remember years ago, I said, Lord, because I wanted, I wanted the power. I said, I'll be Abraham's age. Well, you know, Abraham, 100 years old, you know, I don't want to wait until I'm 100 years old. But I said that to God. You know, I wanted the power of God. I was willing to go through whatever I had to go through. You know, and that's why when I'm in the shower, God said, did you pray for this? Didn't you ask me for this? So that's the same for you. Did you ask God to use you? Did you pray for the power of God? Well, don't be surprised why you're going through what you're going through. You know, you've got to be able to do those things you don't want to do. I wasn't going to mention this, but maybe I will. You know, you know, my husband, God bless my, my little lady friend that lives with us. You know, this is the where God's place is. This is temporary. We, you know, temporary to God, you know. We've been here now a year. This is temporary. <laughs> you know, God takes his time. And so, you know, we have to, you have to be willing to do those things you don't want to do. Daniel has to take, I told you, Donna wears a colonoscopy bag. And um, it's not her fault, okay? But, you know, th this is what I'm talking about. People in the church don't even want to deal with, okay? People don't want to deal with people like me. I'm disabled. I can't drive, can't get around. I don't even have much help. My husband helps me. God bless him. He takes care of Donna. You know, I, and my girlfriend helps me do some errands. She's going to help me tomorrow. I've got a few helpers here, but I'm not very many. I'm going to let you know right now. It's God. God is the one that's helped me. So people don't want to deal with people that have problems or, you know, but those are the people that God wants us to reach out to and help, you know. So um, I was talking about how, you know, Daniel has to take out her garbage twice a day and we had to clean out the tub because it's all stopped up because she had to clean out her bags. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Do you want the power of God? You're going to be willing to do the dirty work. You know, these are things we don't talk about in the church. We think, oh, we want that power of God, but we don't realize that you've got to be willing to do the lowly things, the things that nobody wants to do. Though That's what you have to be willing to do. All right, I just thought to mention that. So if you're asking God to use you, be prepared. Be prepared for what you're going to go through in the days ahead. Because it's not going to be all peaches and cream, okay? It's not going to be like that. God's going to make you go through trials and tests and things that you don't want to go through, okay? But if you ask God to use you and you want the power of God, then you've got to be willing to do whatever God's asking you to do. You know, he's got to be able to trust you. He can't trust you if you're not willing to obey him and do what he's asking you to do. You have to obey the Lord. All right, let me read you this devotional. It says, wake up call. Down here it says, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Revelation 3, 2. During the years when I traveled frequently and stayed in a different city every night, I always scheduled a wake up call when I checked into a hotel. Along with a personal alarm, I need a jingling telephone to help get out, me out of bed and moving in the morning. The book of Revelation contains a spiritual wake-up call in the Apostles John's letters to the seven churches in the province of Asia. To the church in Sardis, he wrote this message from Jesus himself. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive. But you're dead. Wake up, he says. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. In the midst of spiritual fatigue, we may fail to notice the lethargy that creeps into our relationship with God. But the Lord tells us to remember what you've received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. Many people find that scheduling some extra time each morning to read the Bible and talk to the Lord in prayer Help them stay spiritually alert. You know, there's an, there's no excuse. I'm going to tell you right now. I know I'm home. I know you have to work, but you can make time for God. If you have trouble getting up a little earlier, you know, make time in your lunch break. I've told you, Daniel used to bring his Bible to work. He used to read his Bible at lunch. I remember when I first got born again, I would pray on my way to work. I'm not getting in the car. 
listening to Larry Linkus. In fact, I had to take my family down to see what he looked like. I had to meet Larry Linkus. But I remember. That, so you can make time for God. You know, don't make your time at the end of the day when you're tired. And you, or, you know, you may say you're going to pray and then you fall asleep and you don't pray. So make your times first in the morning so that you can get God's wisdom and direction for the daily things that, that are going to come up against you. You want to pray for your family and your children before you leave the house. Apply the blood over you and protection and over your mouth. You know, I know I do. All done. I need to, you know, pray because I may say things that I shouldn't say. And I need to pray that more. But, you know, we're going to meet people that that don't know Christ and I know you do more because you work out in the world so we have to have the fruit of love, peace, patience, God will work those things in you you know and it's not always um, Lord get me out of here you know you may get out of there and you might wind up somewhere else but he's gonna do the same thing over there you know God's trying to teach you to walk in love, teach you peace, patience, all those fruits so you know he does that in your job. I know when I get on the bus. I don't like to ride that bus, but he's teaching me patience. Stuff. I'm not patient. After 20 something years, you think I'd be patient. No, I'm not patient. The bus will either break down or I ride the bus for over an hour. You know, so God has a way of getting our tent to work the, the, the um, fruit of the Spirit in our lives. All right, let's get back to this. It says, Many people find that scheduling some extra time each morning to read the Bible and talk to the Lord in prayer helps them stay spiritually alert. It's not a job, but a joy to spend time with Jesus and know that He prepares us for whatever lies ahead that day. And that's so true. We need to spend the first fruits with the Lord so He can help us for what's ahead of us in that day. And here's a little prayer. Lord, enable us to hear and respond to your wake-up call today. Amen. I love that. I don't know about you, but I know... He has a way of waking me up. A lot of times I wake up early, you know. Now, last night I just kept waking up and I didn't want to get up. But he'll wake me up and he'll speak to me. I'll go to the restroom and then he'll say a word to me. Or sometimes he won't say nothing. It just depends. Or sometimes he'll wake me up. I'll start coughing. I'll start coughing and he'll wake me up. And I've had even a um, Charlie or a minor one. But I've had that where God wants me up. And he wants to talk to me. He wants to spend time with us. He loves us, saints. Eh? The more you spend time with your father, you know, you're just going to just love to be in God's presence. It's not a chore. You know, it used to be a chore, not anymore. I love to spend time with my father. I love to spend time with the Lord. And I know one day I'm going to get busy. I'm not going to have this time. You know, I'm ready to do what God's called me to do. Oh, I'm ready. But I do love my time with the Lord first. I love everything else. And I, I plan to keep God first in my life. He's everything. He's our everything. Without Him, we're nothing. Just remember that. Without Jesus, you and I are nothing. All right. Praise God. All right. I want to share this word with you. You know, I was sitting this um, yesterday, and I kept hearing, I heard Him say this in my spirit. And I want to share this with you because, you know, I told you when God speaks to my spirit, it's for you too. It's not just for me. He's talking to you. You know, and when He's correcting me on things, He's Talking to the choir is for me, but he wants me to share with the body of Christ. And he spoke this word to me, and and I heard it. I'm going to share it with you. He said, the sun is shining in your life. That's what I called it. The sun is shining in your life. I got this at 922 yesterday. He said, be not downcast no more, says the Lord. The sun is shining. That's right. The sun is shining. You are coming out of the wilderness into a land flowing with milk and honey. God is getting ready to do something, saints. There are those waiting. Get ready. It's coming. No more crying or weeping. Have you been crying? I know I have. And there are times I still cry. But you know what? I know he's getting ready to change things. All right. You, my child, I've chosen to come up higher. And I just talked about that yesterday, that God is going to anoint you to do great miracles in these last days. You are my entrusted servant that will go forth and do what I've called you to do in my power, says the Lord. That's right. God is getting ready to call up daughters and sons in his power to do what he's asking them to do. These are the last days. We're getting ready to say huge revival. 
All right. He said, that power belongs to me, King Jesus. You are just my entrusted servant. I will use to perform great miracles. I hear the Lord say, do not forget to give me, King Jesus, all the glory, honor, and praise. That's right. We don't want to forget the Lord. All glory and honor and praise goes to Jesus. It's not us. It's Jesus. All glory and honor belongs to me alone. Touch not my glory, says the Lord. You know, I don't know about you, but I get a little nervous because I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know if I want it. You know, I, I think about Moses. Remember what Mo Moses hit that rock more than once. You know, and me, I have a temper. I get angry and I'm thinking, well, what, or what if I mess up? You know, so I, you know, it, it does make me a little nervous. Okay, then Eric, say, he said here, I'm planting you on higher ground this day. You will know because I will perform a change in your circumstances. He's going to perform a change in your circumstance. There are those, God's going to change your circumstance. I will open all doors for you and you will just walk through them, I hear the Lord say. And I've said that before. You know, if you leave it in the Lord's hands and let God do what only He can do, He's going to get the glory. Jesus is going to get all the praise, honor, and glory. Because only Jesus can do what only He can do. And I know Daniel and I need a miracle that only Jesus can do. We can't deliver ourselves. We need Jesus to deliver us. So we wait, and we wait, and wait. And maybe that's for you too. You need to keep waiting. And you can't do it yourself. You need God to do it. God will do it. Just keep waiting. All right. Then I heard him say this. The, the veil is coming off today. I heard him say that. What has kept you bound and hidden for so long is now broken, I hear the Lord say. God's about to break off chains. That's what he said here. I'm going to read this to you. I, the Lord, am breaking chains in people's lives today. See, you have chains. God's about to break them. Thank him. Thank him because those chains are about to be broken. Praise the Lord. Whom the Son sets free is free today in Jesus' name. You are no longer bound, says the Lord. You are made free. Free to love me, free to worship me, and free to serve me as I desire for you to. You are mine and you belong to me alone, says the Lord. You don't belong to the world. He gave me this scripture. I'm going to read it to you. If you've got a Bible and you want to turn to it, John 15, 18 through 27. The world's hatred. Verse 18. If the world hates you, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Verse 19. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world. See, God chose you. He chose you out of the world. You are not of the world. Praise the Lord. Therefore, the world hates you. See, the world's going to hate you. We're going to be persecuted. All right? So don't be shocked. If people are persecuting, they're not going to like you. You are not of the world. Remember the word, verse 20, that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Verse 21, but all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. Verse 22, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Verse 23, he who hates me, he who hates me, hates my father also. You know, um, you know, my husband and I were talking, I was talking to him about this, but, you know, you know, when people get upset, you know, even, um, when they, about the news, fake, uh, they're always coming against the, the conservatives and Christians, and they don't want to hear about it. Well, you know, it says here, he hates me, he's my father also, so they hate the Lord. And, you know, how can they expect to go to heaven when they hate the father? All right? And they don't like this type of preaching. They don't like the praising. They don't like the worship. Because in heaven, that's all there's going to be. You know, so you can't go to heaven if 
if you're not born again, you're not, you know, you you don't want to hear any of this stuff. You you don't love it. You hate the Father. So, you know, we were talking about that yesterday. Verse 24, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my Father. See, they don't, they don't want to hear it. And there's, it's getting worse. I mean, people don't want to hear about God. In our nation, they don't want to hear about it. They want to keep doing their sin. They love their sin. Verse 25. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without cause. The coming rejection. Verse 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Verse 27, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I, and then God said this to me, I've set you free and broken ties to this world. I, King Jesus, have gone to heaven to prepare a place for you. That's right. Jesus is preparing a place for you and for me. Hallelujah. And he said, place for you and my children. I will come back and get you, I hear him say. My timing is soon. Now, I know when I say that, Remember I said one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day. I know, I believe Jesus is coming again. He's coming for you and he's coming for me, but he's not coming yet. His timing is not like ours. We have got to wait. In your spare time, you can read all of John 14. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to read you John 14, 1 through 6. The way, the truth, and the life. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you, you know. Verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Read it again. Verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's right. Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, maybe you're listening to me and you're not born again. You can only come through Jesus. You have to give your heart and life to Christ. You know, if you believe in some other religion or some other God, if you've not given your life to Jesus, now is the time. I just read you the scripture. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. There's no other way to get to heaven. You have to come through Jesus. If you want to be born again, today's your day. Not tomorrow. You don't want to keep putting it off. For those that don't know, in 2000, I was in a very dangerous car accident. I had brain surgery on the right side of my brain. I was hit by a drunken driver and almost killed. You can go on our website, www.dawnsheartbrookcorner.org, and you read my old testimony. I was on my way to church when a, when a drunk driver pushed a car behind me over the medium and almost killed me. All right? I was laying flat on the floor. The paramedic had to come get me. It was faster to, to drive me there than fly. Had the paramedic and I'll stop, I'd have been dead. She wasn't even supposed to be going that way. All right? God had her going that way. I, I believe she was driving her own vehicle. Had she not stopped, I would have been dead. I was turning from. God had her there at the right point in time. And maybe this is the right point in time for you. Maybe God's talking to you. Don't turn this station off. Okay? You may not get another opportunity to come to Christ. Today is your day. Something may happen tomorrow. You may die. You may have a heart attack. You can get hit by a car. You get shot or killed. Things are happening. Our world is changing. We live in a very dangerous world. It's not safe to go here and go there. You don't know what can happen tomorrow. I don't care if you're a Christian, non-Christian. It doesn't matter. We've got to be seeking the Lord in these final days. But if you don't know Christ, today is your day. I'm telling you right now, God is talking to you. You know, you're here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. There are those that still need to come to Christ, okay? God is warning people is trying to get the word out there. He knows who's going to come to Christ and who's not. Okay, If you've heard this word, God is knocking at the door of your heart and saying, let me in, let me in. Are you going to let Christ in? Or are you going to keep ignoring it and going your own way? 
He's trying to reach you. If you don't know Christ, today is your day. Make sure you're ready. Don't say a prayer to receive Christ out of fear because you're afraid you're going to go to hell. No, say it because you're ready to turn your heart and life over to Christ. You're tired of doing things your own way. You see that it's not working. Well, it's not going to work. Not until you give your heart and life to Christ. You know, it's going to get so bad that you and I aren't going to be able to turn to no one. We're not going to be able to turn to our governor, our mayor, our president. We're, we're only going to turn to Jesus. What's going to happen when the economy goes? People are going to go crazy. They're going to have nowhere to turn. You're going to have to turn to Christ. If you don't know the Lord, turn Him now. Make sure you're ready. Let God be there to help you, strengthen you. He will. It doesn't matter what you've done with all my mistakes. Okay? You can think you're the worst sinner. No, you're not. We're all sinners saved by God's grace. If you don't know Christ, say, today is your day. I want you to pray with me. I want you to bow your head. I want you to mean it. Repeat this prayer and just say it. Say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died for me, Jesus, to give me eternal life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer, go and share the good news with someone. Go and tell them what Christ has just done. The ha this is the happy day. The angels are rejoicing and so are we. You can write us a letter. The address is up on the screen. We'd love to hear if God's just saved you. Or maybe he's done some praise report in your life. Maybe you're believing for God to heal you and do a miracle. Let's pray. Christians, let's pray and believe this is the season. I believe that we're about to see God's power move. So, Father, we come together in agreement. Us Christians pray and agree, Lord. You can do anything, Lord. There is nothing, Father, that you cannot do, Father. We are in the season of the miracles, Father. I stretch forth my hands and I pray with your people, Lord. I ask you to heal them. Heal each one that is watching me right now from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name, I speak healing over them. Right now, in Jesus' name, be healed by the stripes of God's wounds. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Just receive your healing. It's coming. I'm telling you, God is about to do great and awesome miracles. Praise Him. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. All right, let me finish reading this. Continue being faithful. That's what God said to me. Continue being faithful. Persevere and do that. Do all that I ask from you today. Be obedient. Okay, we need to be obedient. Be obedient to the Lord. When I return to get you, my reward will be in my hand. I heard him say that. He's going to have the reward. I believe it's in scripture. It says that too. I will give my rewards only to those who are faithful to finish the race. Does, does not everyone who, who built a building make sure they can finish building it? Luke 14, 26 to 33 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate Hey, father, mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Verse 28, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Verse 29, for if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, Everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying that person began to build and wasn't able to finish. She, you need to be able to finish this race. Don't just start it and then not finish it. Don't be a quitter. I'm talking to somebody here. Don't be a quitter. You keep going, says the Lord. I don't care how bad it gets. You keep going. You press on. You persevere until you finish this race because God has a reward in mind for you and for me. So we've got to finish this race. We cannot give up. Alright, 31. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? Verse 32. If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything 
you have cannot be my disciples. And then the Lord said this to me, You, my child, finish the race you started. And I said this, Do not quit. That's right, do not quit. I will not pass out rewards to quitters. That's what I heard him say. God will not pass out rewards to quitters. You must finish the race and be pleasing in my eyes, says the Lord. And for the Lord has spoken, that was what he gave me. We have got to keep going. We cannot quit. We can't give up. we got to press on. All right, I'm going to play the song. And we're not going home yet, but I loved this. And I want to play it, and then we're going to pray before we leave. One of these days, we're going to see him face to face. Amen. Looking for that That's right. We're going to see Jesus. One of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. Hallelujah. One of these days, the eastern sky is going to split. And I shall see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Anybody looking for that day? Amen. Of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet.
I want you to know we love you. We appreciate you, and that you know, I I I, I come on here when the Lord has me coming on when He says something to me, you know, because I don't want to be saying something He's not saying. Now, can you believe how fast this week has gone, Saints? I cannot believe it. Tomorrow is already Thursday. I'm like, where is the time going? I mean, the time is just flying. I mean. Monday, I, I don't even know where Monday went because it went so fast. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me one thing after another. And so, um, and well, it's only 1130 here. But the time is flying. I just believe, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep looking. I'm telling you right now, something is coming. And, and we don't need to worry. We don't need to be afraid. We just need to stay close to the Lord. God will, will direct us and guide us. Is we're waiting on the Lord. Let's pray. Um, I won't be on here. Don't forget, I won't be on here. I don't think I will be unless God wants me to. I'll, I'll be gone tomorrow, and um, I don't know when I'll be on again. Maybe Friday, maybe th Saturday. I don't know. I just let the Lord lead me. But stay encouraged. Make sure you're reading your Bible, praying, listening to um, praise music, devotionals, read. Stay encouraged. Keep your eyes on the Lord. But let's pray. Father, we just come together in agreement. We pray right now, Lord. I pray for our your protection over all the saints, Lord. I pray the blood, apply the blood over all of us and our nation, Lord. Pray for America, Lord. With all the things that are happening, Lord, with the threats with Kim Jong-un, and um, if there's a war that's about to break out, Lord, I pray for our president, President Donald Trump, and the Trump administration for their wisdom and guidance, Lord, for for, for what you're going to give them, Lord, to help them lead our nation, Lord. Father, I ask that we get back to you, Lord, and we seek you, Father, amongst everything, Lord, because we need you, Lord, especially in the times that we're living in, Lord. Father, we pray, oh God, that we would turn our hearts back to you, Lord. Thank you that you have been good to us. You provide our needs. The economy, the food, the water, everything, Lord. We don't need to worry. We come against that spirit of worry. 
come against that spirit of fear. Our hope and our trust is in you. Lord, I pray for those that are over in California with the fires, Lord. I ask that you put out those fires and those flames, Lord. Mother, I know you're, you're having things happening everywhere, Lord, with the, all the hurricanes and things, Lord. I mean, I know there's a reason why you're allowing this, Lord. So, Father, I pray that your people would see that, Lord, that you're allowing this for a reason, that we need to repent as a nation, Lord. We need to come back to you and that we'd realize if we would start doing what is right, Lord, and we'd start seeking you and following your ways, Lord, I believe you can heal our land, but only you can, Lord. We can't serve other gods and pray to other gods. We can only serve you, Lord. So I pray, oh God, that, that you would um, soften our president's heart and change his heart and, that, and change the White House and touch your people. And even the church, wake the church up where they're sleeping, Lord. Um, they don't see what's happening, Lord. And I pray, oh God, that you'd waken them, Lord. Help us to walk closer to you, Lord. We pray, Father, for this asteroid. I pray no, it doesn't hit us, Lord. You're in control of that, Lord. With everything that's happening, um, with, the, with the fires, uh, you know, we, we know this is going to happen. Because you said in the last days we're going to have wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilence. And you talked about it. You talked us. You warned us, Lord. So we'll be wise to heed to your warnings and listen to you, Lord. You've given us everything we need to know for reading the word of God. Father, I pray that, you, that your people would start reading the Word of God, not just listen to what their pastor, preacher, teacher, prophet is saying, Lord, but that they would test it, make sure it lines up with the Word of God, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask that you teach us, that you would lead us, Lord, that we walk in your ways, Lord. You're coming back to get a bride with, that's without spot or wrinkle. Lord, I ask that we be that bride, Lord, and that you would not leave us here to suffer the consequences of the world, Lord, Father, you're faithful, Lord. You said to watch and pray, Lord. And that's what we're doing, Lord. And I believe you are faithful to get us out of here. Just like you got Abraham Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're living in a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord. And we're not changing, Lord. There are things that need to be changed in our nation, Lord. That we need to repent of, Lord. And we need to do that now. Because things are going to start taking place. We're about to see a shaking. I don't know what, but something is coming. I pray, oh God, that you make us strong for the days ahead. That we be built on a solid rock, Christ Jesus, not in sinking sand. That you make us strong, Lord. Make the church strong, Lord. And that we look to you, look to man, Lord. Father, we, we honor our president. We love him and we respect him. But, Lord, we're not to look to a man, worship a man. No, we're to worship you. I feel sorry for those people over in North Korea. They're worshiping that dictator, that tyrant, Lord. God, I ask that you deliver those people, Lord. Father, protect us from our enemies. Protect the United States from our enemies in Jesus' name. I pray, oh God, that we come back to you and we be stronger than we've ever been. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you the praise, the honor, and glory, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. I believe the best days are ahead of us. We don't need to get discouraged, depressed, and think that it's over. No, it ain't over. It has not even begun. We're about to see what you're about to do. We're about to see greater miracles, Lord. Thank you for the greater miracle powers that's coming forth. Thank you for what you're about to do. We're about to see your power move like never before in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I can feel God's power. It's coming, saying it's the power of God is coming. Look up. Don't be depressed. Don't be discouraged. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Stay encouraged in the Lord. The Holy Spirit's here because I can feel him when I'm on here. And then when I go off, he takes off. But the Holy Spirit is on this little YouTube page. And I give Jesus the glory. All right. I want you to know we love you. We appreciate you. And until we meet again, this is Prophetess Dawn O'Brien. Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner. God bless you. Have a safe and blessed day. Wednesday. Talk to you soon.